Else Listening Part 1. Look at questions 1 to 4. While the exhibition's been running, the organizers have carried out a study of the favorite colors of their younger visitors. Over 5,000 children have responded to this, and there were lots and lots of colors to choose from, so the scores weren't high for each individual color, even if the colors were, like blue, of average popularity. Clearly, the bold colors were the winners. Though purple, which I would have expected to be a high scorer, had just 1.73% of the votes, unlike deep pink, which came next to top. In the middle ground along with purple, which was still pretty popular compared to others, was lime green, the first shade of green to be anywhere near the top. One two-year-old commented that red was dye only color she knew, which is perhaps why that was more popular with children than anything else needless to say, all the tans and beiges came near the bottom. In fact, the lighter the colors, the less popular they were, even the light pinks. So why did the children go for these striking colors? As adults, it's all about clothes what we think suits us or is fashionable. But these youngsters are looking outward more and they go for colors that hit them that they pick out over and above the rest. It's less to do with how they feel, whether it calms them down or whatever, and more about immediate impact. And, of course, there are associations with football that led a lot of both boys and girls to go for particular colors. In fact, more children seem to comment on this than anything else, whereas adults would be more likely to go for something worn by someone they really like. Now look at questions 5 to 10. American Idol appeared on TV for the first time in January 2002. At that time there were no reality TV shows. All TV channels showed movies or TV series. The people from the channel ABC wanted to do something different. They thought the audience was bored with regular TV shows. People did not want to watch shows with doctors, lawyers or policemen anymore. So, ABC came up with a new type of show. American Idol is a reality TV show. There are no real actors or actresses in it. The stars are ordinary people like you and me. The audience really identified with these stars. They felt very close to them. The show was an instant hit. It was very successful and popular from the beginning. ABC was very happy about it. Usually, a new show would cost a lot of money. The producers had to pay both the actors and the writers. But with American Idol it was not the case. These ordinary people did not have to be paid at all. They were happy just to be seen on TV. Besides the show didn't need any writers. The people on the show just sang and gave interviews. The idea behind American Idol is very simple. Three judges tour the country in search of the next music star. They travel all around America and listen to young people sing. Then they choose the best singers and bring them to Hollywood. Here, the contestants have to pass a few more singing tests. The best 12 people in the competition go on to the final round. They perform live on TV every Tuesday night. The judges give their opinion after each performance. But the audience gets to vote on who to keep in the competition. People can vote by phone or through text messaging. The singer with the lowest number of votes is eliminated each week. He has to leave the competition for good. The rest go on singing until two people remain. After the final night the most popular singer becomes the American Idol. So far, there have been four American Idols. They all sold a lot of records. But the most popular of all former Idols is the first-time winner Kelly Clarkson. She is a rock and pop star and has won a Grammy Award for her latest album. Two of the other Idols sing more jazz and soul music. Last year's Idol was a country singer. American Idol is watched not only for singing part. The three judges also play an important role in the show. They argue a lot in front of the camera. Their opinions are always different. This makes the show so exciting. Randy Jackson is a successful record producer. He always acts very cool and relaxed. Paula Abdul is a famous dancer and singer. She is always sweet and has something good to say about the contestants. Simon Cowell, however, is very hard on the contestants. He always finds mistakes and criticizes a lot. He all Section 2 Listen to the tape and answer questions 11 to 20. Today we're pleased to have on the show Julia Bussell from the Dolphin Conservation Trust. Tell us about the trust, Julia. Well, obviously its purpose is to protect dolphins and seas all around the world. It tries to raise people's awareness of the problems these marine creatures are suffering because of pollution and other threats. 
It started 10 years ago and it's one of the fastest growing animal charities in the country, although it's still fairly small compared with the big players in animal protection. We are particularly proud of the work we do in education. Last year we visited a huge number of schools in different parts of the country, going around to talk to children and young people aged from 5 to 18. In fact, about 35% of our members are children. The charity uses its money to support campaigns, for example, for changes in fishing policy and so forth. It hopes soon to be able to employ its first full-time biologist, with dolphin expertise, to monitor populations. Of course, many people give their services on a voluntary basis and we now have volunteers working in observation, office work and other things. I should also tell you about the award we won from the Charity Commission last year, for our work in education. Although it's not meant an enormous amount of money for us, it has made our activities even more widely publicized and understood. In the long term it may not bring in extra members but we're hoping it'll have this effect. Now I will tell why it is possible to see dolphins in UK waters. In several locations, it is possible. We have a big project in the east part of Scotland. This has long been a haven for dolphins because it has very little shipping. However, that may be about to change soon because oil companies want to increase exploration there. We're campaigning against this because, although there'll be a little pollution from oil, exploration creates a lot of underwater noise. I became interested in dolphin conservation in the first place because I came to know that dolphins can't rest and socialize. I had never seen one and I hadn't been particularly interested in them at school. Then I came across this story about a family of dolphins who had to leave their home in the Moray Firth because of the oil companies and about a child who campaigned to save them. I couldn't put the book down, I was hooked. Now I would like to tell the listeners about Adopt a Dolphin Scheme. People can choose one of our dolphins to sponsor. They receive a picture of it and news updates. I'd like to tell you about four which are currently being adopted by our members, Moondancer, Echo, Kiwi, and Samson. Unfortunately, Echo is being rather elusive this year and hasn't yet been sighted by our observers. But we remain optimistic that he'll be out there soon. All the others have been out in force, Samson and Moondancer are often photographed together but it is Kiwi who's our real character as she seems to love coming up close for the cameras and we've captured her on film hundreds of times. They all have their own personalities, Moondancer is very elegant and curves out and into the water very smoothly, whereas Samson has a lot of energy. He's always leaping out of the water with great vigor. You'd probably expect him to be the youngest, he's not quite, that's Kiwi, but Samson's the latest of our dolphins to be chosen for the scheme. Kiwi makes a lot of noise so we can often pick her out straight away. Echo and Moondancer are noisy too, but Moondancer's easy to find because she has a particularly large fin on her back, which makes her easy to identify. So, yes, they're all very different. Thank you. Yes. Part 3. Now answer questions 21 to 27. And here are the prizes in the lottery. Has everybody got their tickets? Good. Well, the seventh prize is ticket number 115. 115. The sixth prize is number 1770. 1770. The fifth prize goes to ticket number 19, 19. Now, let's see who'll win the fourth prize. MMMM. It looks like, yes, number 309. 309 is the lucky number. Now, we have three more prizes. Okay. The third prize goes to ticket number 59. 59. Right, and second prize goes to ticket number 1990. Who has ticket number 1990 in second place? Finally, the first prize. The lucky first prize winner is ticket number 40. Number 40 wins the first prize. Now look at questions 28 to 30. This is the 6 o'clock news for Tuesday the 25th of November. And first the headlines. The Prime Minister has promised to help the drought-stricken farmers in the northern part of the country who haven't seen rain for nearly two years. And in Sydney a group of school children are successfully rescued from a plane which landed in the sea shortly after takeoff.
Transport workers are on strike in Melbourne over a pay claim and the strike looks set to spread to other states. And on a fashionable note, there is to be a new look for the staff of Qantas, Australia's national airline. Part 4. Questions 31 to 40. You will hear a talk on local radio about a short film festival in the town of Adbourne. Choose the correct answer A, B or C. Today we are pleased to have on the show Sandra Johnson who is the organizer of the Adbourne Film Festival. Welcome, Sandra. Can you tell us a bit about the background to the festival and what it brings to the town? Well, the festival was started in 1996 by the then mayor of Adbourne, Joanne Smith. She wasn't a filmmaker herself, she'd actually been a very energetic tourism development officer for many years, but Adbourne had run a classical music festival which had been becoming less and less popular in recent years. Joanne was looking around for something to replace it and to use funds allocated to it to promote something which local people can enjoy. And about the festival nowadays? Well, it's held in the last two weeks of August every year and short films from all over the world are shown in three places in the theatre and our two cinemas. Several films are shown in one performance and the whole thing lasts about 90 minutes. Tickets are very reasonably priced, under 12s used to get in for 50p but now we charge just £1 which is still very good value. £1.50 for students and £2.50 for everyone else. Performances are advertised all round town and also on our website www.adbornefist.com. If you're interested in attending any performances you can buy tickets online of course and you can also get them in the library, which is right next to the main shopping area, I'm afraid this year, tickets are no longer available from either of the two cinemas because of restricted opening times. We run a film competition for under 18s. We have a different theme every year. Last year for example, the theme was Future Planet and the winner was a 10-minute documentary encouraging youngsters to be more aware of environmental issues, focusing on getting school kids to cycle to school instead of going by car. This year the theme is Sporting Nation, so there'll also be lots of ideas to choose from. Now we're always on the lookout for new local talent so if you live in the Adbourne area and are under 18, you should have a go. We have an excellent prize every year, donated by local businesses, shops hotels etc this year you can win a high spec movie camera worth over 800 pounds application forms are on the website and the deadline for sending in your film to enter the competition is the last day of july it's may now so you'll have the whole of june to be working on it if i talk about what the judges look for although we choose very topical issues like the environment we're not looking for propaganda you know trying to get people to do something instead we're looking for a new angle a fresh way of looking at a theme. And of course, because it's a short film festival, it's not really about a fully worked story with well-rounded characters, it's more about good photography, conveying things visually. A panel of three people judge the films as they know a lot about film. We've used the same judges for many years and we're very happy with their expertise. One thing we probably will change next year though is we want to add another class and another prize for older filmmakers. We'll keep it at a maximum of 10 minutes though, the length works well for our festival. We also want to use different venues for the film shows, such as community centers and at least one school. It might make performances more accessible to a wider audience. We did explore the possibility of having late night showings but that's unlikely to happen in the coming year. So, as I say, if anyone's interested in submitting a film for our competition, go on to our website. This is the end of listening test. Now you have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet.